In this section, I'm going to discuss a number of properties that signals can possess, such as symmetry and periodicity. Signals can possess a number of types of symmetry, and the first type of symmetry I need to introduce is what's known as even symmetry. So a function x is said to be even if it satisfies a condition of this form. So what this condition is saying is that for every real value of t, it doesn't matter if I evaluate the function x at plus t or I evaluate the function x at minus t, I obtain the same result either way. Similarly, a sequence x is said to be even if it satisfies a condition of this form. And what this condition is essentially saying is that for every integer value of n, it doesn't matter whether I evaluate the sequence at plus n or I evaluate the sequence at minus n, I obtain the same result either way. In terms of the geometric interpretation of even symmetry, uh, geometrically even symmetry implies that the the graph of the function is symmetric with respect to the vertical axis. So at the bottom of the slide I have a couple of examples of even signals, uh, signals that have even symmetry. In the bottom left uh, of the slide I have an example of a function with even symmetry. So you can see from the graph of this function it has symmetry about the vertical axis. In other words the left half of the graph is a mirror image of the right half of the graph where the, the mirroring is taking place through the vertical axis. And in the bottom right of this slide, I have an example of a sequence which is even. And again, you can see that this, the graph of this function is symmetric about the vertical axis. In other words, the left side of the graph is essentially just a mirror image of the right side of the graph. The next type of signal symmetry that I need to introduce is what's known as odd symmetry. So a function x is said to be odd if it satisfies a condition of this form. So essentially what this condition is saying is that for all real t, if I evaluate the function at plus t and I evaluate the function at minus t, the only difference is you get a sign difference between these two values. In other words, their magnitudes are the same, it's only the sign that's different. And similarly for a sequence, a sequence x is said to be odd if it satisfies a condition of this form. And what this condition essentially is saying is that for all integer n, if I evaluate the function x at plus n, or I evaluate the function x at minus n, the only difference is I get a difference in sign. In other words, the magnitude of these two values is the same, it's only their sign that's different. And you can show that an odd signal, in other words, an odd function or an odd s sequence, must always be such that x of 0 is equal to 0. And this just follows immediately from the fact that if a, any real number is equal to its negative, this implies that that number must be 0. In terms of the geometrical interpretation of odd symmetry, uh, uh, the graph of a signal with odd symmetry is symmetric with respect to the origin. So essentially you have two sort of mirroring operations. If you want to get the left, or sorry, if you want to get the right half of the graph of this function from the left half of the graph, you first mirror the graph about the vertical axis and then mirror it again about the horizontal axis. So on the bottom left of the graph, we have an example of a odd symmetric function. And on the bottom right, we have an odd symmetric sequence. And again, you can see that basically the left half of the graph is generated by the right half of the graph by two mirroring operations. First mirroring about the vertical axis and then taking that result and mirroring it about the horizontal axis. The last type of symmetry that I need to introduce is what is known as conjugate symmetry. So a function x is said to be conjugate symmetric if it satisfies a condition of this form. So essentially what this is saying is that for every real value of t, if I evaluate the function at plus t or I evaluate the function at minus t, the only difference is the two numbers are conjugates of one another. And similarly for a sequence, a sequence x is said to be conjugate symmetric if this condition is satisfied, which is just saying that for every integer value n, if I evaluate the sequence at plus n or I evaluate the sequence at minus n, the two numbers that I get are just conjugates of one another. And the real part of a conjugate symmetric function or sequence is always even, and the imaginary part of a conjugate symmetric function is e or sequence is always odd. And sort of the classic example of a conjugate symmetric function is a complex sinusoid, which is a function that has this particular form here where omega is a real constant.
Another property that signals can possess is periodicity. So a function x is said to be periodic with period capital T, or simply capital T periodic. If for some strictly positive real constant capital T, this condition holds. And what this condition is saying is simply for all real values of little t, if I evaluate the function at little t or little t plus big T, I get the same result. And effectively what this is saying is the graph of the function repeats every capital T units along the horizontal axis. So in the bottom left of this slide we have an example of a T periodic function. So you can see in this graph here every T units along the horizontal axis this function repeats itself. It cycles through the same values. Similarly we can have periodic sequences. So a sequence X is said to be periodic with period capital N or simply capital N periodic. If for some strictly positive integer constant capital N, this condition holds. And what this is saying is for every integer value of little n, if we evaluate the sequence at little n or little n plus big N, we get the same result. And effectively what this is saying in terms of the graph of the sequence, every capital N units along the axis, the horizontal axis, the value of the sequence repeats. So in the bottom right, of this slide I have an example of a periodic sequence and this periodic sequence is periodic with period 4 so every 4 units along the horizontal axis the sequence cycles through the same values. On this slide I need to introduce a little bit more terminology that relates to periodicity. So first of all a function or sequence that's not periodic is called aperiodic a t periodic function is said to have frequency 1 over t and angular frequency 2 pi over t. The angular frequency is simply the frequency expressed in radians. And similarly for sequences, an n periodic sequence x is said to have frequency 1 over n and angular frequency 2 pi over n. And often as engineers we get a little bit sloppy with terminology, so often we'll be working with frequency expressed in units of radians, in other words we'll be working with angular frequency, but often we'll simply refer to it as frequency and drop the word angular. Usually this doesn't cause any confusion because it usually it will be clear from the context because we're measuring frequency in units of radians that what we're actually talking about is the angular frequency even though we may refer to it simply as the frequency. At this point, I just have a few more comments about periodic functions and sequences. The first comment is that if a function or sequence is periodic, the period is never uniquely determined. That is, if you have a function or sequence that's periodic with period capital T, that function or sequence is also periodic with period KT, where K is an arbitrary, strictly positive integer. And to help illustrate this, if we look at this function here, which is an example of a periodic function, this function is periodic with period t, because every t units along the horizontal axis this function repeats. But this function is also periodic with period 2t, because every 2t units along the horizontal axis fu this function repeats. And similarly, the function is also periodic with period 3t and 4t and 5t and so on. Now this said, often we're interested in the smallest period with which a function or sequence is periodic. And this smallest period is referred to as the fundamental period. And the corresponding frequency is referred to as the fundamental frequency.